Hi everyone. So in this taste session, we're going to be looking at the mystery surrounding the deaths of the princes in the tower and reach judgment on whether we think King Richard III was responsible for this. Now the idea of the taster is to get a flavour of the type of lesson you would experience if you were to choose one history at the sixth form and also get an introduction to one of our key topics, the Tudors. So let's begin with some background information, as I imagine many of you might be wondering who the princes in the tower are. Well, they are the sons of King Edward IV, quite a young, popular king. Unfortunately, he died quite suddenly, leaving his eldest son, Edward, to inherit the throne. However, Edward was only 12, far too young to rule. So you can imagine, can't you, having a year seven make all the decisions? It wouldn't go so well. So he has his uncle, Richard, help him rule. And the decisions made to keep Edward and his brother safe in the Tower of London. Now, whilst they are there in this tower, rumours started to emerge that they were illegitimate and many said that their father wasn't legally married to their mother, Elizabeth Woodville. And eventually this was passed through Parliament, and it allowed Richard to be crowned king as the legitimate heir to the throne. Following this, the boys started to be seen less and less, to the point where they disappeared, and it's assumed that they were murdered. Their two bodies were discovered in the reign of Charles II under a staircase in the Tower of London, and they were re-examined in the 1930s, and it was concluded that they were the bones of young boys around the ages of the princes when they disappeared. However, when this was looked at again in the 1950s, it was suggested that it was too difficult to say for sure that this is definitely the princes or how they died. No matter that, though, the prime suspect in the disappearance and possible murder of the princes is Richard III, their uncle. Now, he arguably has a clear motive. With the boys out of the way, he could become king. But would he be really that evil as to murder his nephews? There are many who believe that he didn't. So we need to look at the other suspects. Firstly, we have Henry VII the first of our Tudors. Although he has no direct link to the boys, he certainly benefits from their disappearance. Not only because he's able to defeat Richard at the Battle of Bosworth and have no other claimants to the throne, but because of their disappearance, many people turn against Richard and begin to support Henry. We also have the Duke of Buckingham, Richard's brother-in-law and Henry's cousin. He's able to manipulate them both. So initially he supports Richard's claim to the throne, but then secretly plotted with Henry to have Richard removed. He left England shortly after the boys disappeared, and many believed that he killed the boys to frame Richard. And finally, we have James Tyrell, a loyal servant of Richard's. There's lots of evidence that came out during the Tudor period that he murdered the boys. So our job then is to look through the evidence and see who was responsible for the boys' disappearance and possible murder. Was it Richard III, or was it one of these three suspects? So I would like you to have a look through the evidence and to see who was responsible, seeing what we can learn from this, whether we think it's reliable and what judgments it allows us to form. Now you'll find the evidence on this sheet here. You can see lots of different sources. So read them through, find out what it tells you about the disappearance. Have a look at the provenance, which is this part here. So in this case, Thomas More writing 30 years after the events. Do we find that reliable or not? And does it help us to form a judgment as to who is guilty? Once you've done that and you've looked through all the evidence, see if you can form a judgment we think that Richard wasn't responsible. He didn't order the disappearance because he was loyal to his family. See whether you agree or disagree with us and formulate that judgment. Because of course, history is all about using that evidence to form judgments, almost like a detective. So why then did I choose to do the Prince in the Tower for this taster for you to look at? Well, without this event, arguably we wouldn't have the Tudors. And as I mentioned earlier, Henry VII certainly benefits from their disappearance. So we begin our course in September looking at the very beginning of Henry VII's reign and how he is able to secure his throne and dynasty. So to prepare for that, there's lots of extra reading and research you can do. So take a look at the new student hub for some suggestions. So I hope you, looked, you enjoyed looking at the mystery surrounding the princes in the tower and I look forward to hopefully seeing you properly in September.